Eve, please. The Gospel of Luke, and we're in chapter 5. And I want you to come with me, please, down to verse number 12. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, and verse number 12. And it came to pass when he, the Lord Jesus, was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man but go, and show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. But so much more, but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. Here tonight in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, we have a very moving and a very touching story. A story of a man tonight who was beyond all hope all human hope, that is. And not only was he beyond all human hope, this man was beyond all religious hope. This man this evening was in a place that nothing could be done for him, humanly speaking or religiously speaking. But you know, in this story tonight, moving and touching as it is, yet this story tonight doesn't leave us at an end, doesn't leave us tonight at a loss, because tonight the Lord Jesus steps into this story. And out of the very heart of this story tonight, right out of the very heart, the Lord Jesus brings hope where everybody else thought that hope could never be found. You see, dear unsaved friend tonight, that's the nature and that's the person and that's the power of the lovely Lord Jesus tonight. The Lord Jesus tonight is the source of all hope. Where there is no hope, humanly speaking, the Lord Jesus can still bring hope. Where there is no hope, religiously speaking, the Lord Jesus brings hope. For mind you, dear unsaved friend tonight, nothing has let people more down than religion. And nothing tonight has turned its back more on people than religion. Religion will only want you when you're walking its way. Religion will only love you when you're putting plenty on the plate. Religion 
will love you and cuddle you and do everything for you as long as you're walking their set of rules. But when it comes to the bit, dear friend, you'll come to a time when religion, no matter how nice it may seem, no matter how good it may appear, I want to tell you tonight, religion will do nothing for you. When it comes to the crunch, you'll find that religion has nothing to offer. Here's a poor man tonight in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. A man tonight beyond all hope, humanly speaking, and a man tonight beyond all hope, religiously speaking. But the lovely part of this story tonight is that the Lord Jesus steps into the scene. Because you see, tonight there's nobody beyond hope as far as Christ is concerned. There's nobody beyond His reach tonight. I love the wee verse that you're reading, Isaiah 59 and verse 1, where it says, The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Thank God tonight there's no sinner in the gutters of sin that low that Christ cannot reach them. Thank God tonight in spite of a person's sin, in spite of their position, there's no sinner far enough away from Christ that the hand of Christ cannot reach them. Do you know something tonight? There's not a drunkard in Kilkeel that Christ cannot reach and save. There's not a person in the county of Down that the Lord Jesus cannot change. He specializes tonight in changing life. He specializes tonight in bringing hope where no other hope can be found. Because you see, the Lord Jesus tonight, He not only can reach, reach the further sinner. You know, friends, tonight the Lord Jesus can meet the greatest need. There's no need too great that the Lord Jesus Himself cannot meet. You know, friends, this evening as I look at this story tonight, there's no person, there's no person tonight beyond hope. Christ, the Lord Jesus, my lovely Savior tonight, He brings hope when other hopes fail. Maybe you've come to this meeting this evening Ah, oh, you've tried all. You've tried this and you've tried that and you've tried the other thing, but nothing's working for you. But I'm telling you, I'm glad you're here tonight because I'm not here to offer you religion. I'm here to present to you, Christ, the man of this story who brings real hope. Because you see, friends, tonight, thank God tonight there's no Nobody tonight who's unmendable. There's nobody tonight who's unreachable. There's nobody tonight, as far as the Lord Jesus is concerned, is indeed unhealable. The lovely nature of the Lord Jesus is this. He touches the untouchable. He loves the unlovable. And dear unsaved friend tonight, He wants to meet with you in a powerful and in a mighty way. In this story of Luke's Gospel, chapter 5 tonight, here we have a broken man outside the boundaries of human hope. But the Lord Jesus steps onto the scene. Do you know in Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 27, we read these words, I am the Lord. The God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? 
You know, friends, is there anything too hard for me tonight? That's what the Lord is asking in your heart. Is anything too hard for me that I cannot do for you? The Lord Jesus himself said, he himself said, with people it is impossible, but not so with God, for with God all things are possible. You know, we live in a throwaway society. Everybody throws away everything now. But you know, the Lord Jesus doesn't throw away anybody. You read the Gospels, friends. You tell me, you show me one case tonight where the Lord Jesus turned any poor soul away. There's not one sick person he turned away. There's not one diseased person that he turned away. There's, in fact, there's nobody where the Lord Jesus turned away. I want you to look at that story in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5 tonight, because there in verse 12 we see a man and his condition. It says there, here's a man tonight full of leprosy. This man tonight was covered from head to toe in this awful disease called leprosy. Can you see tonight this poor, pathetic creature, so helpless, so powerless? Can you see him tonight as this leprosy is eating away at his flesh? Society doesn't want him. The religion doesn't want him. Can you imagine the sight can you imagine the smell of this poor creature as his skin is eaten away? You know, it was a dark day for this man, you know, when he learned. It was a dark day, you know, when he noticed a wee spot, maybe perhaps in the back of the hand. It was just a wee spot, you know, that's how it starts. Maybe he looked at it one day and he didn't give it any second thought, and then he noticed it maybe getting a wee bit bigger, and he says to the wife, I don't like the look of this. I'm going to let it go for another week, and another week went and came and gone, but it got worse. It got so worse until it was diagnosed and recognized as as the treacherous disease of leprosy. In those days when you were caught with leprosy, you were out of the city. You were away from everybody. You were away, separated from family and from friends, and you were outside the city to perish and to die alone. You know, my dear unsaved friend tonight, leprosy is the picture of sin. In fact, sin tonight is the worst disease of all. It starts off very small. In fact, you were conceived in sin. And the Bible says tonight, the wages of sin is death. Here's this poor pathetic creature tonight. Look at him in his helpless, hopeless condition. Here's a man tonight walking about outside the city full of leprosy, and he has a death sentence hanging over his head. A death sentence. And as he looks at himself and as he sees himself, he sees himself as someone who's without hope, left alone, left to perish, left to die. But dear unsafe friend tonight, let me say this, this is you. Because this poor leprous man, full of leprosy tonight, without hope religiously, without hope humanly, this is you tonight. Because every sinner tonight is without hope, humanly speaking, that is. And every sinner tonight is without hope, religiously, that is. There's a many of sinner this evening who's in their sin tonight, and they think that drinking communion wine takes their sin away. They're at the Lord's table, and little do they know they're eating and drinking damnation to their soul. And they're trying religion, and they're trusting in religion, and they're doing everything that they can this evening. But religion can't take away the leprosy of sin. 
No, 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 this poor creature tonight. Oh, friend, can you see him? Covered from head to toe in this awful disease called leprosy. Can you see him tonight? Helpless and hopeless. But this is you tonight. As you see this man in this page in this scripture reading thing, this is you. It doesn't matter how upright you are. It doesn't matter how religious you are. It doesn't matter how good you are, friend, tonight. We are all as an unclean thing in the sight of a holy God. We're living in a culture. We're living in a society. We're living in a day. Well, I'm, I'm Baptist. I'm all right. Oh, no, you're not all right. I'm Presbyterian. Oh, I'm all right. You're not all right at all. My Bible doesn't say you're a Baptist. My Bible doesn't say you're a Presbyterian. My Bible says you're a sinner. My Bible says tonight you're perishing. My Bible says tonight you're dying without hope, without God, and without Christ in the world. Tell me this. Do you believe the Bible or do you not believe the Bible? This man's condition, full of leprosy, but when you look in verse 12 again there, you'll see this man's comprehension. Because look what it says there in verse number 12. And it came to pass when he, the Lord Jesus, was in a certain city, behold a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face. Who seeing Jesus. Oh, dear unsafe friend tonight, for this man that was full of leprosy, what a sight to behold. This man's comprehension. He may have been a poor leper covered from head to toe in leprosy, but who seeing Jesus fell on his face? This man's comprehension. This man didn't have to go to the Lord Jesus and say, tell me this, are you the Son of God? He didn't have to go to the Lord Jesus and say, are you the man they're all talking about? Tell me this, are you the man? He said, he, he didn't have to go to the, to the Lord Jesus and say, are you the great healer who can heal the leprosy? No, who seeing Jesus? This man's comprehension. You know, friend, tonight it doesn't matter how sick a man is or how sinful a man is. A man can know who Jesus is. Who's seeing Jesus. You know, friend, I'll tell you something about this poor old leper tonight. Pathetic as he was, he knew. He knew that he, the Lord Jesus, was the answer for his very need. You know, dear unsafe friend tonight, can I say something to you? There's nobody more loving, and there's nobody more caring, and there's nobody more willing to help you. There's nobody more willing and loving and caring to meet with you. And there's lo nobody more loving and caring and, ca and, and loving and caring to save you tonight. Because he is. He is your answer. I'm telling you tonight, this man, once his eyes fell on the Lord Jesus, oh, he knew who he was. He didn't have to go running about the country asking who he was. He knew who he was. February the 9th, 2012, Whitney Houston, appeared on stage for the very last time in Hollywood. And as she appeared on stage that night, the 9th of February, 2012, it was a Friday night, Whitney Houston, as she brought the concert to a close, she made this statement. Many years ago, I made the greatest decision in my life. The greatest decision I made in my life was to ask the Lord Jesus into my heart. I know, she says, I have forsaken him. I know I have turned my back on him. But do you know what I realized this morning? This is this morning. I realized that he never once turned his back on me. And she says, I want to finish this concert with this one song, 
The first song I ever sung. The first song I ever learned. And it was the song, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. In front of millions, watching on television, and the thousands that were gathered there, Whitney Houston finished her last live performance with those words. That morning, she read Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, and she read verse 17. It was the story of the transfiguration. No, the story of the baptism of Christ. In verse 17, she read these words where God said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Whitney Houston said, This morning I saw him and have turned back to him. You know, dear unsaved friend tonight, in spite of your sin, the Lord Jesus will never turn you away. Two days later, Whitney Houston took a heart attack and drowned in her bathroom. As a result of a heart attack, it wasn't suicide. Heart attack. But on that Friday morning, she saw the Lord Jesus in Matthew 3, 17. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Dear unsafe friend tonight, can you see the Lord Jesus? Can you see God's Son tonight as they crucified Him to the cross? Can you see Him tonight as He bore your sin in His own body upon the tree? Can you see Him tonight who was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities? Can you see him tonight, the one that the Father was pleased to bruise because of you? Can you see the one tonight who Herod and the soldiers were pleased to, for him to be set at naught? Can you see the one tonight who was uplifted high on Calvary's hill? Can you see him tonight? You need to see him. Bearing shame and scoffing rude, in your place condemned he stood. And I can tell you this, he sealed my pardon with his own blood. Hallelujah. What a Savior. My friend, this evening, unsafe friend, lift your eyes tonight and behold the man of sorrows, the one who was acquainted with grief. Behold him tonight. There's no other Savior. This poor blind, this poor leper tonight, hopeless and helpless, he, he beheld the Lamb of God. He beheld the Son of God. You need to behold him tonight. The Lord Jesus, whom this leper saw, is the very same Lord Jesus you, the sinner, needs to see. He says to you tonight, Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there's nobody else. Don't you let anybody tell you there's another Savior. There's no other Savior. If you're trusting in anybody else tonight, or looking to anybody else, or calling upon anybody else, you'll be in hell. The Lord Jesus died for your sin and he died for my sin. But thank God tonight the lovely Lord Jesus who gave himself on Calvary's cross, who cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The one tonight who bowed his head and died, died there for you and died there for me. Ah, oh, but thank God that's not the end of the gospel story. The gospel story doesn't end at the cross because it's a continuing story because beyond the cross tonight, there's an empty tomb beyond the cross tonight. There's a risen Savior and the Lord Jesus who met this man that day wants to meet you this night because he's alive. People say to me, how do you know he's alive? I'll tell you he's alive because he's in my heart. A lot of Christians go about thinking he's not alive. Boy, when you see the face of someone, 
I can tell you, friend, tonight, he's alive. Nobody could ever change my life apart from him. Nobody could ever keep me the way I am, only him. I'll tell you, friend, tonight, the Lord Jesus doesn't only save. He keeps. He saves. He sustains. And I'll tell you this, he satisfies too. Satisfies. Oh, friend, you know this evening, he saw his face. But this poor, pathetic creature in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5 tonight, friend, he beholds the Lord Jesus, and he sees him, and he comes to him, and he falls him at his face. Do you know how he came? He came just the way he was. He came full of his leprosy. Didn't cover himself up or nothing. He came and he fell on his face. Do you know why he fell on his face? Because he realized how unworthy he was. Son or friend, you need to realize that how unworthy you are before the Lord Jesus, because he is the Son of God. And it doesn't matter tonight how upright, how good, how religious you are, every one of us tonight, if you're not saved in this meeting, that is, you're unworthy before him tonight. The Bible says you are, we are all as an unclean thing. But you know, friend, tonight, this poor leper learned a great, he learned a great lesson that day. The lesson was this, I can come to Jesus as I am. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because I promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. That's how I came. I didn't come to the Lord Jesus that night in a shirt and tie and all dickied up and shaved. Not at all. I came to the Lord Jesus that night sitting in the Church of Ireland Church Hall with an old army jumper on me, a pair of jeans on me, and a pair of Dr. Martin boots. Yes. And a wee packet of smokies in the left pocket, on the, yes, one of the pockets. And I'll tell you, friend, that's how I came to Christ. I came as I was. I came to Jesus as I was. Weary, worn, and sad, but I found in him that night a resting place, and he has found me glad. I can tell you that night, he saved me and he satisfied me. And the ciggies went into the fire, and I'll tell you, I never had a puff on the devil's dummy tit again. And you know, friend, I can tell you, he is the Savior that satisfied. Ah, you know, friend, that's the way I came. I didn't come all drickied up and dressed up. I came just the way I was, sitting in the chair. But I heard a message that night in John 14 and 6 where the Lord Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And friend, that night I came. Oh, friend, look at this man tonight. This man's condition, this man's comprehension. Listen to this man's cry. Lord, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Oh, I love that bit. This hopeless case, this poor leper, this, this pitiful person. Do you know something like he never once doubted Christ's willingness to accept I love the way this man came, you know. He never once doubted, well, what happens if he turns me away? The Lord Jesus won't turn you away. This man never doubted once that the Lord would turn him away. Oh, not at all. Friend, the night I was saved, I'll tell you this, I didn't doubt because I'll tell you the joy and the peace that I got that night was real. Was real. Oh, no, no, no. This man's poor, this poor man's cry, Lord, if thou wilt, thou, can, thou, thou canst make me clean. You know, friend, tonight, he knew, he knew that the Lord could do it. He knew. Do you know? Do you know tonight that the Lord can do it for you? I'll tell you, friend, I'm a living testimony, he can do it. And so there's many other people. 31 years ago, coming on the 31st of August, 1985, that's the night I came, a Monday night. Came as I was. Came like this old poor leper. Came the way I was. And that night, he received me. And I said, Lord Jesus, will you save me? And I'll tell you, that wasn't a long prayer. Lord Jesus, will you save me? Will you come into my heart? Come in now. Amen. That was the prayer. And I'll tell you, he hears the prayers of sick and sinners. You hear your prayer tonight. Ah, but will you take a wee look? Take a wee look now at this man's change. Because look at verse number 13. And he put forth his hand, oh, I love this wee bit, and touched him, saying, I wilt be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy. 
departed from him. Did you notice that? Do you notice the Lord Jesus did there? Look at verse 13. He put forth his hand and touched him. The Lord Jesus, the sinless Son of God, touched this poor, pathetic, smelly leprous, leper. He touched the man that men wouldn't have touched with a barge pole. But that's the Lord Jesus, isn't it? And it says immediately, his leprosy departed from him. You know, friend, tonight, your worst disease isn't cancer. That's not, that's a horrible word. I'll tell you, it sends shivers up my back, that word cancer. I'll tell you, there's a worse cancer tonight. It's the cancer of the soul, and it's called sin tonight. And you come to the Lord Jesus tonight with all your sin, and let him put his hand on you, and let him put his blood on you, and I'll tell you, friend, immediately the sin will depart and you'll be a new creature. Boys, what a moment it was for this poor leper. What a moment it was when suddenly he looks at his hands and he looks at his arms and he looks at his legs. Clean! Thank God. Christ has the power to make us clean tonight. I'm going to finish with this wee verse. It's Isaiah 1, verse 18. And the Lord is saying to you tonight, Come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Will you come tonight as a poor sinner this evening? Because that's all any of us were ever born. And you'll find in the Lord Jesus the answer for your need. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer together. Lord, tonight we thank thee for your love. We thank Thee, Lord, tonight for Your touch. We thank You, Lord, tonight for the, for the way in which, Lord, sinners can come this evening. We thank You, Lord, tonight that Thou art here with arms outstretched, welcoming, Lord, anyone who will come to Thee. But, Lord, tonight we turn the, the eternal issues of this meeting over to Thee and pray, Lord, tonight that God the Holy Ghost will do His work in bringing conviction and conversion tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.